Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, lately, I've been getting a couple of requests from viewers and members uh, asking me how I go about free motion quilting. And if you're not familiar, uh, free motion quilting is a technique that you can do with your sewing machine. Uh, once you're all done uh, piecing together the top of your quilt, the quilt top, uh, you then go ahead and create your quilt sandwich. So you have your backing and then you have your batting uh, in between and then the top of your quilt. This is a scrap piece of fabric that uh, we're going to pretend is a finished quilt top that we've sandwiched together. And as you can see, I've placed my basting pins to hold everything in place and keep things nice and smooth. And for the top quilting thread, I'm using this invisible thread. It's made of 100% polyester. It's very, very, very fine, finer than my own hair, actually, believe it or not, if that's even possible. Um, but I will link to it down below. My machine really loves it and it works really well. But you can also use all-purpose thread. That works just as well. Uh, I'm only using invisible thread because it uh, it's, it's great for high contrast quilt tops. So when you've got a lot of color going on, a lot of patterns, this just blends in really, really nicely, uh, hence why it's invisible. The other thing you wanna make sure you have is the appropriate foot for your sewing machine when you're gonna be doing free motion quilting. These feet will vary depending on the machine that you have. So if you're not sure, if you're not sure what foot you should be using, go ahead and read your sewing machine's manual or call the dealership um, or the manufacturer and ask what foot would be appropriate to use as a free motion quilt foot. Case in point, I wasn't sure what foot I should be using. So I went to my uh, local sewing shop and they actually deal in Janome sewing machines, which is what I have here. Um, and she said, the, the lady working there, she mentioned that because my machine is a front loading machine, I'll move this here so you can see. You can see the bobbin right there. Um, but this machine loads from the front, whereas other machines uh, load from the top. So depending what type of loader you have, you're gonna need a, t a special type of foot. But because mine loads from the front, she recommended getting a darning foot, which is what I have attached to my machine right now. Sorry for the squeaks. Um, so I've got that all threaded up and I'm going to close this up. Oh, and one more thing that is very, very important for free motion quilting is that you want to drop your dog feeds. Dog feeds are these things, interesting things right here, then when raised, it helps shuttle your fabric through the machine. But when it comes to free motion quilting, you yourself want complete control of moving your fabric through the machine. So again, look at your manual and find out how you can drop your dog feeds. For mine, it's inside the, the bobbin casing right here. So it's just a matter of clicking and moving it from side to side to drop the feeds. Um, so there's that. Once we have all those things in place, we can start free motion quilting. Um, so I'm gonna remove this pin right here in the center. Uh, typically, I don't think it really matters where to start, but I like to start in the center just because it prevents fabric from bunching up in the middle. Um, this way you can kind of sew and spread out, if that makes sense. So once we find our center, I'm going to drop my foot, lower my needle, pull it out again, and just kind of my take my seam ripper and kind of bring the, the thread out like so. And for free motion quilting, you don't necessarily have to adjust your tension. Uh, the main thing is to just find a rhythm uh, and find a balance, a comfortable balance between um, your foot pedal, the speed of your machine, and your the motion of your hands. Again, if you're new to this, it really helps to do a practice quilt first and just finding a groove that way and then going into your, your main project. So, okay. I am gonna get going on this. And I'm gonna start out with a meandering stitch, which is, I feel like, the easiest way to free motion quilt. It's kind of, you know, it's very beginner friendly. If you're a beginner, the meandering stitch is a good place to start because all you're doing is going in and out, in and out and around. And um, so let's, let's try doing that. And that should give you a general idea of how to get started. Um, one thing that I do wanna say is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't be caught up on getting your stitches um, completely uniform. It's okay if, they, if some stitches are a little shorter or longer than the others. As long as they're relatively ballpark uniform, you should be fine. But yeah, don't get hung up on getting your stitches 
perfect, you know? Um, but I will say, when you hit these curves, these curved areas right here, you do wanna slow down because going too fast around these curves can cause eyelashing, which is not the end of the world. It's, it's really not a big deal, but you know, it does look a little unsightly when it does happen. So, you know, when you're going around curves, just slow your roll a little bit and proceed. <laughs> so let's, let's do a little more of this. And you can see right here, my stitches are much longer than the stitches over here, but I'm not gonna get mad about it. It's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it's as you're going, you'll, you'll definitely find a rhythm of, you know, the length of stitches and the speed of in which your your hands are moving. And that's that's what you want to shoot for. And I hope I hope that makes sense. But yeah, you just kind of want to go with the flow, just fill in all the empty spaces and just go around and and, you know, have fun. That's that's the main thing. Have fun. And as you come to your basting stitches, you can feel free to remove them like so. I find this very relaxing, you know, just put on an audiobook, put on some music, a podcast, and just have at it. And it's totally okay if you wanna make a loop-de-loo <laughs> or you can see here that I overlapped that line right there, which is fine. Um, and another fun one is just, yeah, do the loop-de-loos, little bubbles. Oh, and you always, sorry, I forgot to put my, my needle down. Um, always put your needle down if you're, you know, adjusting your fabric or removing pins. Um, just helps keep things in place. And if you do, if you do mess up, if you get a little eyelashing and you don't like the way it looks, you can always just whip out your seam ripper, rip it out and, and just go right over it. Um, it's not, it's not a big deal. One last thing that I will say, watch your fingers. <laughs> Don't get your fingers stuck underneath the needle. That could be very, very painful. I mean, knock on wood, that has not happened to me, uh, but you definitely wanna be a little cogn You definitely wanna be very cognizant of where your hands are in relation to the needle. There are other tools you can get to help make this move a little smoother. Like I know that they make a pad, a, um, a slick pad that can go underneath your fabric so it glides on the surface easier. Um, you can also get gloves to help grip the fabric better. I, I might be investing in those as well at some point. Um, and then there's this tabletop that I have. This is a sew study and you can get a custom one shaped to the type of machine you have. Um, I will link to all these things below if you wanna check them out. But um, I, hope, I hope this was helpful. I hope you got the gist of how uh, relatively simple it is to get started with free motion quilting. I mean, I, for one, am still learning. Uh, I have got a long way to go, but I thought that I would share, you know, where I'm at uh, in case you're just getting started. And I, I hope you, I hope you learned something and, you know, let me know in the comments below uh, if you have any questions and I will, I will do my best to answer them. Have an awesome day and I'll see you next time. Bye.